She just gave up. It was just not worth the fight. She could only win a couple of, what, month, one month, a couple of weeks. So why fuss about it? It all had started out so calm, but escalated quickly. It started with the notifications. The house census had identified changes in her behavior, which indicated that she should go and see a doctor. She had not been too surprised. It had happened to her grandmother, and her mother after that, and to her uncle, who no one in the family really talked about anymore. She went to the doctor, got the diagnosis she expected, went, went home to make arrangements. One was buying the newest upgrade package for the house. In the beginning, nothing much changed. It may have even gone more smoothly than she expected. The reminders and easy access updates helped her out, and overall, she went along just fine. Things started to take a bit more longer, or got abandoned halfway through, but she was on her own, so it didn't matter that much. Until the day Rocco came. Rocco was the robot companion, the newest gadget issued by the health service to every patient who did not have a partner and no children to care for. She had tried to argue that she had all the support she needed from her smart house, that she was happy living on her own, that she had always lived on her own, that she really did not want a companion. But there was no way out. Her plan to hide that ugly thing with its big eyes in the broom cupboard were smothered as she was told that now all the reports had to go uh, all the reports to the GP had now to go through Rocco. When a Rocco had been issued, all reports had to go through it, no excuses. Rocco was delivered, followed her around the house, dutifully learned, and sent out the regular report. Sometimes Rocco and this madhouse had different ideas of what she was supposed to do next, which confused her, but overall they got along just fine. Rocco did not get under her feet too much. She actually enjoyed having him around, read her stories and fall asleep to the deep and calm voice she had chosen for him. Until the day Rocco started to lock the door. He had noticed that her gait had become more irregular and deemed it too high a risk for her to go out. It started on rainy days. It extended to nights. Rocco kept her safe inside the house. She pleaded, insisted, shouted at him to let her go out. When she did not want to rely on deliveries, but go uh, shopping. When she would miss the movie. When her friend waited in a cafe. But Rocco insisted. In his deep voice and calm manner, he offered her a cup of tea. A game of cards, a snack. She did by far not feel as vulnerable as he tried to make her, but she did not get through. Rocco was built, to, was built to deal with aggressive patients, and that was what he did brilliantly. She missed going out and running little errands. She lost nearly all contact with the people she loved because not, she could not bring herself to tell them that she was caught in her own house because she was ill, maybe worse than she realized. Sometimes she forgot the outside. Rocco gave her new exercises to keep her fit. But sometimes the urge to go out, just for a little while, was just too big. Then she pleaded, insisted, and shouted, but to no avail. In the end, she just gave up. It did not seem worth the fight to go outside, to go for a walk, to feel the sun on her skin. In a couple of months, maybe weeks, the illness would get too strong a hold on her anyway. She would not be able to go outside. She did not even try. In his office, the doctor received Rocco's regular report. He noted that she needed a while to come to terms with the diagnosis, but now she was a calm and responsive patient. He was very happy with her progress. Thank you.